Yo. Hi. Why do you sound so angry? Because you said yo, and then I said hi, and then you said yo again, and you said it louder, so I thought you couldn't hear me, so I was like, hi. Annoying as F. I was about to put the Judge Judy gif in our thing, because I was just sitting here waiting on my buddy. What's up, everybody? It is Carly here, bringing you episode number 15 of the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast. As always, I am joined with my buddy, JP. How are you doing, JP? Yo, yo, I'm back on the Netflix and Chill grind. Yeah, we both is. Yeah, so, uh, we're back again. Yeah. I told you we'd be back. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, a little bit has happened since the last time we recorded. Uh, Basically, one of my podcasts that I was part of uh, is continuing on without me. No way. Yeah. The Married with Children podcast, both me and Jerry had to part ways with. uh, Parted ways in a, you know, obviously like a positive manner. It wasn't like there was some kind of beef between me and Alex Mm -hmm. or anything. It just uh, was my time to leave. And I've already discussed the reasons why on various different outlets. So I figured I would just uh, leave it at that for this. But the one positive thing about leaving Married with Children is it probably opens up the door for recording Netflix and chill more often. Which makes me happy. Yeah. So when we started, we was pretty much weekly. And then we were kind of bi-weekly. And then we were kind of like (laughs) bi-monthly. But uh, I was really swamped with other podcasts, watching 15 movies for 22 shots, as well as recording Married with Children every single week. So now I am down to just 22 shots, as well as the Netflix and Show Horror podcast. And whenever... Luis is available we'll do some MMA stuff but for the most part I have two podcasts again which is nice it's a breath of fresh air yeah so what have you been up to I mean I also have two other podcasts so that's cool I mean um, I of course I have the horror pack podcast with the boy Jer aka Jerry And then I also started up a podcast with the other boy, Austin, and that is the Body Bags podcast where we um, basically, if you guys are familiar with the YouTube channel Body Bags, it is a weekly or um, um, let me reward that daily. Yeah, daily review channel. But there's uh, one person per day who does a review of a movie um it could be any horror movie as long as it like hasn't been reviewed previously obviously and um then at the end of the month we typically do a theme week where one person picks a theme it could be like um blue underground week or insect week or something like that and our podcast is basically to try to get that channel uh, a little bit more hype because it seems like it doesn't get all that as many views as it really deserves. And um, also, it's just a cool way to kind of review movies, uh, random horror movies. So basically what we do is we talk about the movies that each of us have reviewed on the channel for that month. And then for the theme week, we both watch that movie and we both give a review on that movie so that is also a monthly podcast that i do um all my podcasts are monthly which is kind of nice because it's not that much commitment but yeah that's basically what i've been up to lately cool cool yeah um tonight we decided to go with veronica which is a movie that you picked it was your pick yeah And Veronica is a movie that got quite a bit of buzz when it was released. Um, I don't know who did the marketing campaign for that film, but 
it was like crazy because you kept seeing these articles like the most terrifying movie on Netflix and stuff like that, you know? People are turning it off and dying while watching it. Yeah, Must it's, see. it's, uh, it was pretty crazy. Like, um, there's, uh, my cousin, um, his name's Scotty. He has his girlfriend, Jess, is kind of into horror movies. Um, and whenever she, she has a horror question, she'll like ask me. And she, asked me about Veronica and it was like a day after it was released and I was like I've never even heard of that and she's like oh really and I was like yeah I was like she's like it's on Netflix I want to know if it was any good and I was like oh I'll, I'll report back to you and um like the next day I started seeing it everywhere so it was like kind of kind of crazy um yeah but before we get into Veronica uh, I did want to just say that a little bit of an announcement not anything to do with us, but uh, Santa Clarita Diet Season 2 is currently up on Netflix. Yeah, Have you watched any of it yet? I have not, but Mood said he watched the first episode or two, and he said it's still really funny and awesome. So, nice. Uh, if you guys remember a while back, we covered, probably a year ago at this point, we covered the first season, and we both really loved it. Um, so I would probably guess that we, you will hear us talk about season two, uh, in the coming weeks or months because I can't, uh, I can't I, wait to delve into it. I can't believe it's, that really shows how fast time goes. Cause I remember being like, man, we have to wait a whole year for this new season to come out. And now it's just like, it's up. Yep. Yeah. And it kind of snuck up on me and I really, really want to get back into how we were, where we were covering like all the new stuff that was coming out. Like I, I missed that because that was mm-hmm. really fun for me. It gave me an excuse to watch all the stuff that I needed to watch, um, for the end of the year. And like, I got to see cool stuff like Santa Clarita diet. So yeah, yeah, I'm definitely really pumped for that. That should be, uh, maybe even our next episode. It is my pick, but I don't know. There's like a ton of Netflix originals that came out too. um, like uh ravenous and the ritual which i've heard so many good things and uh like kind of mixed reviews too about it mm-hmm. it seems like the consensus is that some people really like it and some people really like it but don't like the end um so that's that's something that i'm super intrigued to check out uh and then you know shutter is constantly getting their originals um which there's so many we didn't even cover like it bummed me out i wanted to cover like all of them um, but there's still, I think, I think most of them are still up on there. So, so we'll definitely get into, uh, some shutter exclusive slash originals content. Um, well, actually technically they don't have a ton of original stuff. Uh, we've covered the core and we covered their other original, uh, but for the most part, they get a lot of exclusives. I know they just signed on for another couple exclusives. Plus we got Castle Rock coming to Hulu. Uh, so that's pretty cool. There's, there's a lot of good stuff coming out. And a lot of stuff that's already out, and I can't wait to cover a lot of it. Uh, this is what's really cool about this show is that if it's called the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast, but it should have been called the Horror Movie Streamcast uh, because we're pa- basically covering anything that is streaming. Uh, and I think that it is a really um, cool show, and hopefully we can start growing again since since we'll be back. I know we say we'll be back all the time, but I really I really believe it this time. Yeah, and it seems like a lot is just coming out all of a sudden. Like I feel like when we started the show last year, like the movies that were just popping up just were few and far between, and like some we had to like review like movies from the previous year and things like that. It just mm. seems like there's like so much this year compared to last year around oh, yeah. this time definitely i i 100 percent agree with that um we've still never even covered like stranger things in in depth or anything like that so oh yeah <laughs> there, there's a ton of stuff that we could do but um i i was thinking that say let's hold off stranger things till season three and then we'll just cover the whole show like season one two three yeah uh and yeah, so um, tonight's though we're covering Veronica, uh, and this film was directed by who, Carly? Uh, Paco Plaza, who also directed the Wreck films, but I have never seen any of them, unfortunately. Yeah, so he directed Wreck one, two, and three, um, which is mostly what he's known for. Uh, I hear that Wreck one and two are phenomenal. 
Um, people often say they're two of the best found footage films ever. Uh, and I hear Wreck 3 is okay as well, but not, not, not nearly as good. Uh, that's pretty much all he's done in terms of like horror that I know of. I haven't seen any of his films besides this. Oddly enough, we did a Halloween marathon last year for Halloween where me, Carly, and another person uh, named Matt uh, all picked a film to watch. Uh, and it was like, what, five films all together. We opened with a classic. Yeah. We picked Stage Fright. Uh, and then it was Matt's pick, which he picked Possession. Uh, then it was my pick, which I picked... Uh, or I was last, I think. You were second. What was your pick? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it actually was pretty entertaining. It was like... I don't know what Son, the real It was called The Son of Sleepaway Camp, a.k.a. Memorial Valley Massacre, I believe. Yes, yes. Which, the whole point of this was to try to pick something obscure or something that uh, is going to wow but isn't that known. Um, and my pick was Miss 45. I'd say Matt won the night. He picked the best yeah. movie um, that most fit the uh, criteria. And then... After that, we ended with a brand new film, which we did, uh, the 1922, 1922 film, yeah, for the Stephen King adaptation, uh, and overall, like, it was a really good night, uh, but yeah. why I brought this up is that I initially was going to pick Wreck as my title, um, but I didn't, so... Uh, that that but that's how much of a film that I thought people you know love it so much you know it's a, it's a film that uh, people talk about and it's a film that none of us have seen so I thought it would have been perfect um, I kind of got scared and got cold feet at the last second with uh, it being a subtitled film and I knew I was going mm. to be the fourth film in the lineup and I thought we would be much more tired and miserable. Uh, because, you know, this generation being uh, ADD, uh, when it comes to sitting down and watching marathons of movies. Uh, but surprisingly, even with Matt's, like, near two-hour film, it went <laughs> by pretty well. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it was mainly because we all picked very different films, including, like, the one we started with and the last one. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like if we would have watched all serious films or... So, you know, something with, like, the same theme over and over again, it would have kind of sucked. But it was a successful night. And I keep I keep forgetting that you've never seen Wreck. I always thought you did for some reason. Yeah, no, never seen it. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so that's who directed Veronica. And the writer was also this guy and also a guy named Fernando Navarro, um, who... I don't think has done anything that I'm familiar with. He seems to be some sort of um, uh, Mexican director uh, or mm -hmm. slash writer. Um, and pa Paco Plaza is uh, from Spain. Uh, so, yeah, it's technically Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this film here, Veronica... Uh, I know did well at the Toronto International Film Festival, uh, so that's you know a, a respected film festival that a lot of cool titles come from, uh, which is really neat. Uh, but yeah, so do you want to get into this Spanish horror film? You want to give a plot synopsis? Yes. Um, so IMDb here says, Madrid, 1991, a teen girl finds herself besieged by an evil supernatural force after she plays Ouija or Ouija with two classmates. Yeah, so uh, one little bit of trivia that I saw with this film that I just want to shout out off the top so I don't forget is... The character is actually watching a movie called Who Can Kill a Child. No, buddy, I wanted to say this. <laughs> I was going to be like, guess what? I read the trivia and it pertains to you. But, I mean, go ahead. Just go yeah, ahead. And, and the reason why I'm more deserving of saying that is I just watched Who Can Kill a Child um, either last night or the night before. So that's a really neat that I had just watched that movie and that movie is also a Spanish film. Um, really good movie. Uh, it's a film that I think 
Um, I don't know if it was written before Stephen King wrote Children of the Corn, uh, but if it was, I think Stephen King owes a little, a little uh, tilt to the hat to the guy who directed Who Can Kill a Child. Mm-hmm. Because it's very similar. It's about an island that all of the children kill the adults. It's kind of, I think it's funny that this girl's watching this with her, like, scared siblings. <laughs> I didn't even, like, I didn't realize, I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't realize what she had on the TV too much, but that's probably not the most appropriate thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so... This film, Veronica, here, I watched today. I know you watched it a while ago, so I'm sorry if it's not as fresh in your memory. We were supposed well, to Well, actually, it. buddy, I rewatched it earlier today. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. You're dedicated. Yeah. I actually had it, like, mainly memorized in my head, too, so I almost didn't rewatch it because it was pretty fresh. But um, I went ahead and did give it a rewatch, so it's extra fresh now. But I pretty much remembered, like, everything that was going on. It kind of stuck with me. I actually watched it today earlier with um, uh, a couple of other uh, Facebook group members, um, Johnny and Derek, uh, and I believe somebody else was there, Um, Sam maybe? I I can't remember because we did it last night too. There's basically this program or this website where you can go on there and you can host movies and there's a chat. And you could do it through, like, Netflix and stuff, and, and you guys could all watch the movie together. Uh, yeah. It was pretty cool. I, I saw you post that, la- and I saw someone else had posted it, too, like, the night before. And then, But you click on it, and it said, like, you, you're you locked out. Tell, like, Justin you're here or something. So, like, what do you do? You just, like, click on... <sighs> Or do you like have to tell you that you're going to watch it with you, or like how does it work? I think that I had it on invite only. Oh, um, uh, okay. But I think now I know how to put it on. If you just click the link, you could join it. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'll have to figure out and mess with it a little bit more. But if it, you can basically, I think you could download an app too, and you can join the join it that way. Um, I do it on my PC, so I, I don't really know. You'd have to ask like Sam or somebody like that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that either way, if you just click on it um, and say like "Let Justin know you're here" or something, like it, it'll basically allow me to let you in or whatever too. So, but it was really neat. We watched a awful movie on YouTube last night called uh, Blood Savage. Maybe I, it, I that's probably Blood Stalker. I keep getting it confused <laughs> with something. Um, but that movie was absolutely atrocious. It started off all right, and then it was just absolutely awful. And we essentially, um, you know, just made fun of it the whole time towards the end. It was it was not a good movie. Uh, I gave it like a two out of ten. It was it was really bad. Um, but that was a 1976 movie. Suffice to say that it will not make my top 10 of 1976. Uh, right. <laughs> but let's uh, talk about Veronica a little bit more because we kind of got off track a little bit there. Yeah. So yeah, this girl basically goes and there's uh, an eclipse that's happening and she plays with a Ouija board in the basement of her school. Do we know why she did that? Um, I just, I think it's, had something to do with the eclipse going on and they like i think they were all kind of just into that stuff like that supernatural stuff so they wanted to try it out and see if anything weird would happen while the eclipse was happening yeah so i think she was trying to communicate with her father uh, who, (laughs) who we assume is dead uh we also get a early um you know an early uh character development scenes where we have this girl who's clearly taking care of her siblings so it seems she's we learned that she's 15 years old and she has three siblings and she they're all younger than her and she's like you know getting them ready for school and stuff like that um her little brother like wets the bed so she takes care of that um and you can tell that she is probably the one that's doing most of the mommying mommying <laughs> at the, uh, parenting, parenting at the house, um, yeah. and her mom. We don't. I don't think we see her, her in too many scenes, 
Um, but what's her deal? Um, well, you know, you learn early on that the dad has passed away and I believe the mom owns the bar. So she's basically just running this bar all by herself and she works all day long apparently and then comes home and just wants to sleep forever. So she's, you know, it's not like she's out doing drugs and stuff, but she's just working way too much and kind of puts all the dadding responsibilities on her oldest kid. Yeah, and this movie sets is set in 1991, which is the year that I was born. Um, I wouldn't say that it definitely has like a 90s vibe to it, um, nah. especially because it's culturally different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, the, you're not going to see like Sega Genesis's and all this other <laughs> stuff that you see in in 90s movies that are you know in America. Um, and pretty much all the clothes they wear is like uniform and stuff like that. So it's, there's not like nineties looking clothes either. So it really could have been set anywhere, but I think that the one cool thing about it being set in the nineties is they did manage to make it feel like a pretty simpler time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You don't have any like internet or any type of, uh, you know, texting or any of that going on. It's just, it's more of a reserved horror film. Uh, in terms of the, the tech that's in it. Uh, I like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, um, this girl, after she plays this Ouija board, um, which by the way is not like a Ouija board, like, like a Ouija board is, I think owned by like Hasbro or like Milton Bradley or something like that. Yeah. So it's like, they probably couldn't get like the actual Ouija board, but they just use like a sort of um knockoff like, version yeah knockoff yeah and when they play with the uh ouija board uh she kind of goes into like what like a seizure or something like that Mm-hmm. yeah um and then she begins to get haunted kind of yeah <laughs> yeah um, um what would you say that's like happening in this movie um it's just a, you know, she plays the Ouija board and then just strange events start happening in her home afterwards. She's kind of being haunted and also um, you suspect the kids are also in danger of this haunting and it kind of becomes like a haunted apartment type of movie in a way. Yeah, so what what is the some of the dangerous things that are happening? Um, like the, there's one part where she's giving her youngest sibling, a boy, a bath, and then something happens, she walks away, and then all of a sudden, like, the bath water, for some reason, is just way too hot, and he kind of gets a little bit burnt, and, um, then you also have scenes where late at night, everyone's sleeping, and then something's going on in the girl's room, and then one of the girls suddenly is being attacked by some unseen force and but you don't really know exactly what it is what's going on per se yeah yeah um so i always have slight issues with these type of movies because i it always is frustrating to me that like what does this presence want why if, if they want to kill them why don't they just do it you know stuff like that um there are very like scary scenes um involving like you know creepy imagery in this film uh which i do appreciate um there's uh, a scene where she sees a vision of her father that i thought mm. was really scary did you think so yeah i thought it was pretty scary uh one i mean one thing that i find scary that like really highlights the scenes is the music the score throughout it it's like a whistling just like very eerie like so i don't know so these like scenes where you're seeing this like spirit they're scary but i also feel like i've seen too many movies like this where it's not as creepy to me as it should be mm -hmm. but that's you know that's just me yeah but i it, feel like the music really elevates it yeah that's one thing that derek kept pointing out was how good the music is like there's like a synthy music going on too i'm not a musical expert <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't know like what a sound is when it's being done. Like I can't Me neither. tell I just... you like what kind of instrument it is or what kind of like sound it is. Um, but I know that I like sounds when they sound good, and and this movie's filled with good sounding sounds. <laughs> He, I, it's like, I mean, you know, I was like a band geek in high school. You'd think I'd know, but I never can pick up what instrument is being played. All I always know is it sounds like a whistle, so I assume it's might be a flute or something of that nature, but yeah. Yeah, so um, the music's really good, and I'll tell you that the cinematography is very good as well. Uh, mm-hmm. That's one of the best points in the film. There's actually a scene that I noticed that nobody else noticed that I was watching it with. Um, and it's just like an outside exterior shot from from the ground of these like very tall buildings. And the way that the buildings are arranged and connected to each other, uh, they form a cross, which I can't tell. I can't remember if it was an upside down cross or just a, a cross, but that has nothing to do with the movie, but it's just visual, um, flair that I love when directors add to that because the shape is across the movie is Mm -hmm. about, you know, obviously there's nuns and it's very religious. A lot of Spanish films are very religious as well. Um, it's part of their culture. And, uh, I thought that the nun was really creepy. The chain smoking nun. What did you think that she's blind? Yeah. I mean, I always I feel very like rude saying this, but just the sight of like blind eyes really really creeps me out, especially when they're just wide open and they're just so you know glazed over, and then you have this nun just like staring at the sun because it doesn't even phase her. Like that that really creeps me out, and the fact that it's a nun also kind of made made it creepier for some reason. Yeah, that scene is pretty awesome when the eclipse is happening and she's just staring at the uh, sun. Which, by the way, like I feel like. I, th- I feel like it's kind of dangerous to have all those kids out watching this eclipse. Like, you have to be responsible for them all not going blind. Yeah, this was the 90s. There wasn't as much security and safety. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what else, man? So, uh, we have uh, this. We have a scene where she, like... Okay, for, let me talk about the girl for a second. Veronica herself. Mm-hmm. Um I really like this girl. I thought she did a great job. She has that like nice, like homely look to her. It, wait, you you told me homely's bad, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that means like, uh, like not taken care of, kind of unfortunate looking. Okay, well, I didn't mean that. I meant she has like this this like basic girl look to her, um, mm-hmm. and she has braces which help you feel like she's 15. Yeah, um, that was one. Yeah, I agree. Like, that girl, I don't know if she, I mean, in the picture on IMDb, she looks much older, but mm-hmm. like, I like I thought she was actually 15 in the movie, but I could, she could be older than that, but yeah. Yeah, she's actually a little bit older than that, um, but this movie was filmed in 2017, so mm-hmm. I think she would have only been like a year, it might, if it was filmed in 2016, she would have been 15, I believe. Um, oh, okay. But her current age right now is 17 years old she was born in the year 2001 and her birthday's in three days holy crap that just that just made me feel so old (laughs) you the i mean the fact that teenagers these days are like born in 2000s and like that they're in high school i don't know never mind it's just yeah imagine how i feel like the yeah, idea of a ancient. teenager, like somebody who's 18, it was born in the year 2000 to me is just oh, yeah. absolutely crazy. Like, <laughs> I was born in 91, you know what I mean? Like, you, you would have been two months old when this movie takes place, because it's in June of yeah. 90, 91. Yep, and um, yeah, that's that's always dates me and makes me feel old. <laughs> uh and the 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 longer I'm here the more old I feel whenever I see stuff like that. Like in another 10 years people born in 2010 are going to be like 18. Oh god. <laughs> Stop. But um anyway, did you did you like the uh sibling characters as well or what did you think of them? Uh yeah, I thought they all acted pretty well. They all seemed like little kids. I think the casting was good overall. Mm-hmm. Like, I love the little boy. He seemed like, he's just like, I'm not going to wet the bed again, I swear. And then he just keeps doing it. And he's just, 
So I love little boys with like glasses. His eyes are all big, and I just think he's so cute. Yeah, did that remind you of? Uh, did you relate to him? Uh, I mean, a little. Yeah, he did have the cross-eyed thing going on. So yeah, buddy, I did. Thanks for I meant bringing the wetting the bed thing. Oh no, 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 no. Um, the character's name is Antonito. Yes. Yeah, he was good. He was good. I, I really liked him. He he fit the the role really well. Um, so uh, in this movie, you get a lot of I I don't know. Like I don't really know what like I don't even know what the end result is in this movie. Like I don't even know what happened. Um. Yeah, it's hard. To, I don't really you know I don't <laughs> want to give too much away, but it's like. I guess I can't... Was this... Okay, was this, like, actually based on true events? Well, I don't like know, a, because they clearly show, like, at the end of the movie, they show pictures from what you would assume is a real location and not the movie lo- location, but they mm-hmm. could have just made that for the movie as well, you know? Because, like, I mean, like, on the trivia, I didn't, I wanted to look into this more, but, like, I didn't, I ran out of time. But, like, on the trivia thing on IMDb, it says it is based on true events, so I would have to look more into it. But, yeah, the, like, pictures at the end looked a lot like scenes from the movie, so I really couldn't tell. I mean, either way, it kind of gave me the chills, though, so I'll give it that. But, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that, that, I mean, I, I think that the... Like I'm I'm trying to look up about it right now and I don't see anything that says that it what it was based on. Mm-hmm. Um but I assume that it, that I don't know, it could have been, I guess. I feel like it was might have been loosely based on cuz it says it was like based on that detective's like point of view or something from the call we got or something. So it could have just been like, you know, a story that they took out of proportion and made this big event, but yeah. I don't know for a fact, but I well, mean, getting back, it's definitely what... a film that is saying that it's it, not not necessarily saying, but it's alluding to the fact that it was based on something, at least in terms of the film. Like, like that's you know, the, I'm not saying that they're saying it for sure was, but in the movie, they're making it look like it was, which could just be movie magic, but it could actually be based on something. Yeah. What but, were you um, say? I was just gonna like say back to you talking about the ending, like it kind of confused me as well. I think I don't know. I think it's just all supposed to be a haunting movie. <laughs> there could be meta- there could be metaphorical stuff going on there, but I feel like it was trying to play out as just like a big haunting. Just this thing got inside their lives and kind of you know mm-hmm. scrambled things up a bit. So. Yeah, I liked I liked certain aspects of it. Like, um, one thing that I don't like is the uh, like whenever there's a scene and all of a sudden these kids start biting her, and I literally said in chat I was like, "There's no way this is not a dream sequence," and sure right, enough, yeah. I was right. Now that dream sequence also, you know, partially bled into reality, quite literally. Um, when you talk about, uh, she, I don't know if that's supposed to be her getting her first period or that it she was. just, oh, okay. Cause at the beginning she, when she faints, she goes to the nurse and like, for some reason the nurse is like asking all these questions and then she's like, are you on your period? And the girl shakes her head and the nurse automatically like knows that means she's never gotten her period, which I thought was just a weird bunch of dialogue because it was just a weird assumption, but the girl says she never <laughs> she never had gotten her period yet. She's fifteen. Yeah, so um, that makes sense. Um, that that was kind of a cool scene, I guess. Like, you know, the blood, like the blood reveal or whatever. But I don't really like the dream sequences where it's like something Obvious. something happens and you're like, you know, that it's not real. Like, it just takes a, it just seems like a pointless moment after you realize that it's not real. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've always, I've always disliked that in movies, uh, but there's some other cool, like haunting stuff that happens. Like I like that the kid got burned by the bathwater. That's kind of cool. Um, the black stuff on the mattress that was like in the shape of the person that was really creepy. Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah, that that was creepy. I, I like that. Um, there's like a thing that walks around that just seems like a black mass. I didn't find that very interesting or good at all. Um, it wasn't really scary to me. What did you think about that? Yeah, that's kind of like what I was talking about earlier, how I feel like I've seen stuff like that happen before, and it just doesn't really get to me. And I feel like that was the main scare factor to this movie. So that's, you know, kind of one of the reasons why this movie's not overly terrifying to me, because that was kind of their main um, gimmick or whatever you want to call it, was this black creature kind of walking around their apartments. Yeah, I mean, I liked when it was in the distance, and there mm-hmm. would be these shots of it walking outside windows or something like that. That was creepy. I like stuff like that. I'm just saying whenever you actually see this thing and it, like, you know, actually physically interacts with the humans um, mm-hmm. and the characters, like, uh, to me, it just, I don't know. I, I just, I think it just looks like everything else that's supposed to be a ghostly figure type thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's nothing special going on. That's why I've always gave, like, The Conjuring and Insidious and Annabelle 2 and stuff like props, because they they create cool, like, demon monsters out of their characters, which I, I like way more than just your basic black mass. <laughs> this movie actually kind of reminded me of The Conjuring Part 2 for some reason. I think it's because, like, you have all these kids kind of living in this apartment and getting haunting and then like the ending scene showing like clips of real things that's kind of the vibe i got from it yeah yeah it definitely probably could have been inspired by that um i do think that this director is a very good director um some mm-hmm. of the shots in the film were great i've mentioned that earlier one in particular is when i think the girl's like laying down in bed and she gets up and like the camera like follows her up that was yeah. really cool do you remember that shot yeah, I actually just, I didn't notice it the first time I watched it, and then just watching it, like, a couple hours ago, I was like, holy crap, that was weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it was really good, and um, I think that, that there's, like, a solid atmosphere that's done throughout, like, when the girls first go down into the basement of the school, like, it's really creepy. Are they in the school? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, really creepy down there and stuff, and it, it's kind of cool how they're you know, floating around down there and it's just, you know, playing the Ouija board, which is, you know, something that kids do do, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Have you ever played one? Um, yeah, I have back when I, probably my junior year of high school, I, I had one, I found my grandma, um, had one and she like passed away, but like she like all her game, her old like classic games were left behind and she happened to have one. So, me and some of my friends played it a few times at my old house. Yeah, I, I never actually messed with one. It does nothing. Yeah, nothing happened. My one friend tried to Cody actually tried to scare the crap out of everyone and like pretended to faint, but besides joking around, nothing happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we actually there was a time where one time a couple of my friends. Um, we're going to go to like this abandoned house and, and light up some candles and do it in there. Um, I was supposed to hang out with them that night, ended up not going, mm-hmm. but they did do it. Did, did anything happen? I mean, they said it did, but they, I, I've never heard one person play a Ouija board and say that nothing happened. I know. I hate that so much. And then the stories people tell are always just so like out there. That's yeah. why I'm just being honest here and saying, uh, oh, nothing happened. But Yeah. And yeah. of course my friend Martin would be like swear to God and like all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, swear like, on my papa's life, yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, like the guy who's actually with them, I'm like that one hundred percent that's the type of guy that would move that thing all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. So what else do you feel about this one? Um, overall, I mean like I really It was enjoyable. Like, I didn't mind watching it a second time because, you know, sometimes when I have to rewatch a movie, I'm just like, oh, man, I just watched it. I don't really feel like watching it again. But I actually enjoyed it probably even more the second time around. I mean, you know, it's a little bit confusing. I also another thing I like is just the, the the idea of like this girl having to take care of her siblings and kind of live her life by herself and then like having trouble with her friends at high school, like having that drama go on where her friends are suddenly being weird towards her because of what they did. And then it just feels very 
lonely because this girl can't even go home and cry to her parents or anything like that because she basically is the parent. I kind of like that aspect to it. Yeah, I I really like the um the aspect of of the her taking care of her siblings. That's really cool. Yeah. But um overall I thought it was, you know, pretty good, pretty solid. Um it, it didn't really scare me that much. I knew the um you know, the hype was pretty big on it going into it but um so i didn't really take that into consideration because i knew i wasn't gonna have a heart attack while watching it or anything like that so didn't really let that bother me but at the same time it really just wasn't overly scary to me there were a few times where i did get cool chills and you know i have to give it credit for that because if it can give me and it gave me chills like the second time around too so if it can do that then um you know high praise to it so yeah, you know, I, I, I think that any time a film could, you know, give me cold chills or scare me a little bit, I have to give it props. Um, you know, kind of to wind down here and, and get into ratings, because this is a really hard film to talk about, because mm-hmm. it's a slow burn, really. Like, it's it's more about atmosphere. There's not a ton of dialogue. Yeah, there's a little bit of mythology that comes later in the film where the girl tries to stop whatever's happening and stuff like that. But it's it's kind of a basic movie with not a ton of, you know, substance in terms of, you know, conflict besides the main narrative, which is just there being haunted. You know, there's there's not a ton of stuff outside of that, um, which, which is painful for a review. Uh, mm-hmm. As you can see, we've probably stretched the move. This is a slow burn review because <laughs> we, <laughs> we stretched tried. the we review tried. out a little bit to, to make sure we covered some some stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just not the type of movie that is great for reviewing. Um, but it was a solid movie and, you know, to kind of get into ratings here, um, I will go first. Uh, I do think that this movie is good, uh, on maybe a extremely slow year, um, which it actually is. This could sneak into a low, uh, top 10 or 15 list. Uh, I personally don't think that it'll actually make my list. I could see if you're watching this movie and you hadn't heard anything about it and you hit play, it probably would be pretty solid to you. Like, you'd be like, wow, that was such a cool, like, find. Um, Mm. Unfortunately, I do think the hype got to me a little bit. I expected it to be a little bit more scary, a little bit more good than it actually is. And it is good. I just expected it to be better considering the amount of hype. Um, I don't know if that hurt my rating. I try not to let stuff like that hurt my rating, uh, but it probably probably influenced the way I, you know, and how much I enjoyed the film. Uh, but on a pure technical standpoint, I think it's a pretty pretty well made movie. Uh, a lot of it just didn't appeal to me because it almost felt like a lot of we've seen this before and i even said that in the chat i was like see the pro and this was like 20 minutes in. i was like the problem with these type of movies is they really have to do different and unique stuff for them to be effective and not feel like you're just retreading the same uh you know film again and again mm-hmm. um i do think that the cinematography and the score kind of set it apart from the average type of movie that came out if it didn't have that i think this film would be like just slightly above average but luckily we got some good technical filmmaking going on so with that said i think that i'm probably comfortable coming in at about a seven out of ten all right i mean i pretty much basically agree with everything you just said um you know, like I said, I tried not to let the hype get to me because I knew it wasn't going to be nearly as good as things and people were saying. So, but still at the same time going in, I I was just a little disappointed because not only was it not turn off horrifying worthy, but it really wasn't overly that scary at all at all for me honestly, but I could see how it could be pretty creepy for other people and like I said there were some moments towards the ending mainly that gave me the chills and you know managed to to do it twice so that's a big plus for me and I thought the film was beautiful I really like the how the location is 
for the most part, kind of set in this apartment and then like in the school and things like that. I think they picked good locations for it and the score was good. Even the music that they're using in it, like obviously it's all in Spanish, but I thought it was kind of interesting music choices and I really enjoyed the characters as well. I think they all did a good job for being so young and I came in with a 7.5 out of 10. Cool, cool. Um, and as you were talking there, I actually did look up a little bit more information. Uh, and mm. it does seem like this is based on a case that happened in the year 1990 uh, in the same um, city uh, involving um, some police cars and, you know, a squad that goes into a house. Um, and the police chief or whoever went in said that he was too scared to go back inside the house. Um, mm. And... Basically, apparently, a girl mysteriously died after using a Ouija board. So, um, it turns out that there is some uh, information that you can look up online about the true case, which is definitely cool and and could actually, you know, affect my enjoyment of the movie if I learned a little bit more about it. Yeah, that just <laughs> you just saying that gave me chills because it makes it ten. Even if the movie kind of sucks, like it makes it ten times creepier if it's based on some true event. Mm -hmm. And there actually is a YouTube video from uh, Definition. I have not checked it out, but it popped up in the Google search. It says Veronica movie ending explained and real life true story. So that, that video might break it down and and sort of tell you a little bit more about the story. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I like when movies, um, have like more information that I could look up afterwards. Um, typically when it's a movie that's like really violent and brutal, it's better to not look up that information, but, uh, yeah. ghost stuff, I'm fine with reading about. Uh, yeah. so yeah, that's, that's it for today's Netflix and chill horror podcast. Uh, we will be back very soon with something else. It's my pick. I'm trying to think about what I want to do right now. I'm almost leaning towards Ritual, but mm -hmm. I kind of want to do Santa Clarita Diet too. But I know uh, Ritual would be a faster watch. Santa Clarita, we might need a little bit more time. Yeah, I mean, Santa Clarita is probably going to be like my pick, honestly, if you don't pick it, because like I freaking love the first season and can't wait to dive into that. So we'll probably it's safe okay. To say. Well, if you say that, then how about I pick Ritual for the next show, and we can start watching Santa Clarita Diet for the show after. Yeah, that works. Okay. Safe to say we'll do both. All right. So that's our next two episodes. Yay! All right, um, Carly, do you want to bounce us up out of here? Oh, man. Okay. Thank you guys for listening to episode 15 of the Netflix and Chill podcast. Um, I'm Carly. And, and I am JP. And we are out of here. Peace. Peace.